Hi everybody, it's Tyson again. I wanted to talk about why I built a home gym, especially given the fact that we have this amazing community gym right next to our house. And we have tons of equipment here. So there's a seated row with a cable crossover that has a high and low row. It's got a lap pull down machine right here. This is all by MaxiCam. Um, it's got all the dumbbells up to, let's see, is it 100 pounds um, from five pounds? It's got a chest press machine. And uh, shoulder press. It's got a curl machine and an ab machine, adjustable bench. The leg press machine is not very heavy. It's only got 200 pound stack, which is not heavy enough for me. It's got a leg extension and a leg curl machine all by MaxiCam, and then a bunch of cardio equipment. And treadmills. I'm gonna keep the young lady that's in the gym out of the video. And a rowing machine. So this is new, this rack. And when I started building my home gym, it didn't have this. It had a Smith machine. And that was really the reason why I started building a home gym. So now we're gonna walk to my place and I'm gonna finish the tour. You can see just how close to our house this is. We actually uh, picked our place based on its proximity to the gym and to the pool. So here's the pool right here and I, People, you know, if you're wondering why I didn't buy any cardio equipment, first of all, it's because my space was really small. And second, because we have cardio equipment here at the community gym. And I'll probably speed this up walking past our place, walking past the pool to get to our place, just so you don't have to, but you can see how quick it is. I'm, Nice pool for doing laps. This is one of the things I like to do for conditioning is swim. It's the reason why we got rented this place. We are renters because in order to have all this stuff that we have access to here, we would pay a phenomenal amount of money. So here's our place. Here's my wife. There's Mr. Shrimp. All right. So you can see, you can see the pool out our door Run down here we've got some rings in the stairwell it was one of the first things that I put up okay so here's the garage gym all right and I'm actually gonna open the garage up here for a second so Originally, I built the gym because they didn't have a squat rack. And I did try and go in there a couple of times to use a squat rack, but at the times that I have available to me, the squat rack is always occupied. And it's usually just somebody doing bench press when you need to do squats or whatever. And it's also got a bunch of hex plates, so you can't really deadlift in there. Um, so I needed a serious training space um, because I'd really outgrown that space because there wasn't a rack, I couldn't deadlift, and I was tired of dealing with the crowds. I built this b before the pandemic. I started over three years ago, I think, um, buying equipment, maybe three and a half years kind of increasing the equipment that I have, and about three years ago, I think I started picking up a barbell seriously. And um, so we're gonna go through all this equipment as quickly as possible, and I have a lot of it. So I'm gonna start over here in this corner with the GHD. The GHD is really living in a space that usually becomes dead space for storage. And for a long time, I didn't know where to put it. And I finally figured out that it goes here. And I managed to reorganize some stuff. We got a ton of shelves um, for just all our storage. And my wife still parks her car here, which is why I didn't spend a bunch of time putting floor mats everywhere because usually her car is parked here. Um, 
I moved the pen board over here. It's actually got a little latch here so that you can still get to the circuit breakers because this is a, a piece of wall space that you know you usually can't use because there's there's the circuit breaker in front of it. I've got my scale, a balance scale, it's accurate enough for me. Got a rep plyo box down there. Um, here we've got the dumbbells that I started using six years ago. Um, just picking them up every other day. I actually used a boxing timer and was doing three minute rounds and just slow as I could go. I just moved the weights as slow as possible through as wide a range of motion as I possibly could. And I was a chunky, out of shape, middle-aged man in my mid forties, early to mid forties. And it made a big difference to me. And I just gradually over time started adding more stuff, uh, more variation, like a pull-up bar and body weight stuff. And eventually I needed something to load my legs harder. So I got a weighted vest. I got some ankle weights, pretty heavy ones because I felt like, you know, in order to do really any kind of leg work that was meaningful, I needed a fairly significant amount of weight. I've got some brute force sandbags, which I've only recently started kind of picking up and playing with. Um, I haven't posted any videos of it because I don't think it's very exciting. Um, but I got these because I had played around with some bags in other places and thought it was fun variation. Um, this is a this is just to keep the cats out. Um, and what I do is I open this door and I put the fan in the door to blow either cold or warm air into the garage. This fan up here circulates the air around in the garage. And then I did insulate the garage door, you can see here. And that makes a big difference. I can get the garage, uh, when it's like 110 degrees outside, I can get it down into the 80s. This here is stuck because my wife bumps into it. But it is a platform that goes on my safety spotter arms for doing stone loads. Um, okay, got a leaf blower and a broom and my levels and a fire extinguisher. Um, here we've got my Dewin Classics in blue suede with stacked leather, leather heels. I like these shoes are good for people with wide feet. A pair of cheap deadlift slippers. Um, this is my warm-up stone when I do load stones. It's kind of pitted. It's really easy to get a hold of. It's not that heavy, so it's a good warm-up stone. Um, Here's my Mars bar, which I got about a year ago, I guess. Sort of when they first came out. Apparently the, the new ones have really nice uh, padding. This, the upholstery is not amazing, but this was the version one. And I don't care. I don't really notice it that much. I think from a geometry standpoint, this is an amazing specialty bar. And I like to use it on my accessory squat day. Got a little vacuum. I've got rope lights up here. Um, which which do fine. You can see them up there all the way around the room. Um, the reason why I got back into barbells was when we moved to Sacramento, I actually found this photo of myself from 1990 when I was 17 years old. And these are the numbers that I wrote down. I can't verify that my butt wasn't off the bench when I benched 250. I can't verify that the 350 was to parallel. Um, because I don't remember and there's no video of it, but, um, that's okay. Um, it, it did inspire me to buy, buy a barbell. Um, this gym art is by my buddy, Ben Claridad, who's an Olympic lifting coach and getting into strongman, um, uh, an athlete. Um, he's here in Sacramento. So if you're looking for a coach and you're really interested in Olympic lifting and possibly strongman, I would check him out. This painting over here is by Chris Cinder. It's a gift from my daughter. Um, he's a local artist also. I've got the Elite FTS leg extension and leg curl machine that is plate loaded with bands. And on this, I am loading it with kilo fractional plates that I bought thinking that at some point I would buy kilo plates, but just haven't gotten around to it because it hasn't been necessary. Um, although it probably will happen eventually because I, I when I started by building this gym, I didn't realize I would be interested in competing. These are some specialty collars by Rogue just so that I can position the weight at the place that I want them on the pin. 
the further out this pin the weight is, the more it loads the bottom of the leg extension or leg curl. And you can um, also overload the top with the bands. Here we've got some more stones. These are all the lightest stones. I bought these a long time ago and I don't really use them anymore because they're so small, but they fit up in here and they look good. So um, that's where they live. I've got a shelf here that has my chargers on it and a cup full of bench blocks so that I can do basically board press alone, um, which I actually haven't done much of. Um, here's a kettlebell that's 50 pounds. Also something I don't do a lot of because I spend my time doing other stuff. Deadlift jack, which is obligatory. Everybody should have one. Um, a jump rope, which I haven't used in a while. Jumping rope actually messes with my feet, ankles, and knees a lot. So I don't, I kind of gave it up. Um, here's my wall control unit. I got it in orange and blue because it stands out and it makes the equipment that's hanging on it more visible. If you get a dark color, it makes it harder to see your equipment. And on here, I have some cool stuff. I've got some micro gains fractional plates that are for dumbbells. I'm gonna show you real quick. Basically, you can imagine the dumbbell, you just click it around the dumbbell and you add some weight to the dumbbell. So those are pretty cool. Check out Blanket Micro Gains. He's out of Pennsylvania, makes some cool stuff. Um, I got mag grips, close grip, supinate, uh, pronated. Um, this is the medium grip supinated. This came with the Texas Strength Systems lap pull down and low row machine that you'll see in a little bit. And so did this. This is actually a knurled straight bar, um, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't need an another one. This thing is by Bells of Steel for doing curls to make your curls a little stricter. Um, I got this because because they had one at my high school and I used it when I was in high school, but I honestly now don't really use it because it's kind of uncomfortable. I bought this before I bought a barbell and that was, this was just because they didn't have amazing grips in the home, in the community gym here and I wanted something a little different. So I got this probably four years ago, ju just when we moved here, really like within a m couple of months of moving here. Heavy hangers, which I bought because I thought they were cool and I just haven't used them yet. I haven't needed them in my training. At some point I probably will. These are for the Duffalo bar, which I'm probably not gonna use now that I have the heavy hangers because they're just too complicated to put on. You have to put a bolt on, you know, you have to bolt them onto the bar. Um, here are some fractional plates by Rogue. And this is the Rogue aluminum collar, which in my opinion is the best collar you can get. This is a recommendation by Cooper at Garage Gym Reviews. Check out his channel if you're looking to learn more about equipment. Um, I've got a little speaker here. It's a wireless speaker. I do listen to things in the gym sometimes, but I have to admit that I'm more of a meditative lifter. I'd rather have dead silence, which is actually hard to get when you're in the city. You can hear the sirens. Okay, enough of that. Um, my plate storage is PRX Performance with the added little wings for the fractional plates. And I added a little screw, a bolt here, so that I could even separate them out a little more. I find this is really useful for just getting weight on and off the barbell quickly. I went with Rogue Eco bumper plates because they were the most inexpensive bumper plates I could get. And I lift in my garage on concrete, so it kind of protects the floor and it's also a little quieter. And then of course, later on, I realized that I wanted kilo plates, but by then I was already in pounds. So I just kept going with pounds. Um, these are weighted out plates, which are really thin. Basically it helps me keep the weight um, close to the center when I'm doing deadlifts. And they have handles that are nice and easy to load and unload. I also like the way they sound, but I doubt my neighbors agree with me. Listen, they sound like bells. I have also a 25 pound plate by weighted out and some bumper plates. This is the Rogue. These are actually Lu Jun because they were inexpensive and available. It's kind of nice to just throw 25 pound plates on when you're warming up to a heavy deadlift or a heavy squat. 
Over here we've got my belts. Um, this was my first belt by Rogue with the one inch hole spacing. This is a nine millimeter belt, which is totally fine, but I did upgrade to the 13 millimeter belt by Pioneer in blue suede, so it matches my shoes. And I really like this belt, and you can see that I've actually, I've lost a bunch of weight recently, and so it's nice because it just adjusts to me as I gain and lose weight. Um, here we've got the PRX Performance dip bars. I upgraded my pad to the Thompson Fat Pad, which has been really good for my shoulders. It's wider and thicker. It's actually a little longer also. Um, I like this, this way of storing it. Um, PRX has great equipment for space saving. I went with the PRX performance rack instead of like a four post or six post rack because I really don't have very much space. I've got an eight foot wide space. I've only got the one wall. And if I put a big rack in here, my wife wouldn't be able to do her little workouts that she does with, with dumbbells over here in the corner. And she likes, um, oh, I can't remember their names, but, uh, but she likes to do little like workout videos. And this gives her some floor space for that. Um, I have the Kabuki Strength Cadillac bar, and I'm using it most of the time as a neutral grip chin-up bar. And if you can see here, it's got a slope to it, and it also is in the supinated position. If you flip the bar end for end, it becomes the pronated position. So I'm actually really happy with this. I like it more than I like most new, like neutral grip or multi-grip chin-up bars. It also gives it a place to live so that it doesn't take a spot up on my bar rack. I put this uh, duffalo bar up here because I wanted to show everybody these really awesome J hooks by Ghost Strong that are specifically made for the duffalo bar. And if anybody, any of you have ever had a duffalo bar or a cambered bar of any type, and used regular J cups, you know, it'll, you'll notice that it's a little sketchy and awkward. It doesn't really feel like it's holding onto the bar very safely. And so to me, these are a must. I'm lifting by myself in my own garage and I really wanna have J cups that I trust to hold onto my barbell. I also, these I bought first, I got the roller J cups just to improve the experience of benching by myself. Um, it makes it really feel like a competition bench. And I got the plastic rollers because you can always replace the rollers and the rollers are not as important as the barbell. So these are easy on the barbell and hard on the, the rollers. If you get the metal rollers, they can kind of mess up your knurling over time. Um, the, the PRX Performance rack is folding, so it folds up against the wall. And I used to park my car here when I thought my car was important, but now I realize my equipment is important, my car is not. I've got safety spotter arms. And so if you don't have safety spotter arms or pins or straps and you don't know how to use them and you're lifted by yourself, you're taking your life into your own hands, you ought to get some and learn how to use them. I've got a Rogue Dip Belt, which is totally adequate. It's strong. Um, but if I were to do it over again, I probably would buy the Dominion Strength Leather Dip Belt because they're really nice high-end and they're super cool. And I don't think they're a whole lot more expensive. They probably are more expensive. I haven't looked at the prices recently, but check those out if you're somebody that's not really worried about the money and you wanna buy something forever. But this thing is totally fine. It's, it's totally okay. So if you end up with one of these, I think it's great. Um, I've got my Rogue Monoliths. These are the best sort of swing or weighted monoliths that I saw when I was looking at reviews. Definitely there's a little more clearance when they swing out of the way than with the rep fitness. Um, the interesting thing is Beast, no, Mutant Metal recently came out with some spring-loaded ones which have rollers, which sounds pretty cool to me, but I don't think that I'm going to go with those. I mean, these totally work for me, so I'm not worried about it. Again, the dumbbells that my wife uses most of the time, all the way up to 10 pounds. I've got the Titan Fitness um, safety squat bar, which I've had for a couple of years, a recommendation by Cooper, again, from Garage Gym Reviews, $200 shipped to my door. This is the Liu Zhao Jun Olympic training bar. I'm not an Olympic lifter, but I wanted an Olympic bar and I wanted something I could use to deadlift. And I really like this because it's got a 
relatively passive neural and I'm a hook grip lifter. So when I'm hook gripping my deadlifts or whatever movement I'm using, it doesn't tear up my hands. This is the stainless steel rep power bar. And this is kind of my daily driver. It's sort of a medium neural of the bars that I have. So I can still hook grip with it if I want to. It's got the center knurling for squatting. It's got a wider flange, which makes the walk out a little easier, less likely to clang the plates against the rack. This is the stainless steel Ohio power bar, which is more aggressive neural and has a narrower flange. So I really only use this when I'm getting Use, ready for a competition, which I'm doing right now. So I'm using this almost exclusively so that I get ready. This is a 30 pound bar that I bought because my neighbor who's 60 years old comes and lifts with me and she didn't need a 45 pound bar. As a matter of fact, a 45 pound bar was a little bit too heavy for her. And so we got this 30 pound bar for her when she comes over and she bought one for herself and built a little gym also. You can check out her gym walkthrough. This is the Rep Fitness stainless steel rackable curl bar because curling in your own squat rack is totally fine. Just don't do it at a commercial gym. This is the Kabuki Strength squat bar, which is my favorite squat bar. I love this bar. I've used the Rogue squat bar before, which is also a really nice bar if you're looking for a bar that's less expensive. But I prefer the knurling on the Kabuki Strength because it's a little less aggressive than the Rogue, which is very aggressive. And this is totally adequate. I mean, there's knurling the entire way. Is this really going to slip off your back? No. And it's a little longer, so it really makes the walkout super easy. Uh, this is the Shoulder Rock by Kabuki Strength, which I bought because of wonky shoulders. Same reason why I got the Thompson Fat Pad. Here's some dowels that I'm actually using quite a bit more now because my buddy Ben Claridad puts up videos on his Instagram and he was doing some shoulder mobility stuff because he's an Olympic lifter and they are all about making sure their shoulders are healthy. And so I started doing those, um, these, you know, exercises. And so I'm actually doing those in between warm up sets on any kind of pressing movement. This thing I bought before I ever bought a barbell just to make the gym experience over there at the community gym a little bit more fun. And I find that I don't really like it as much as an easy curl bar so i don't use it anymore i bought it at the same time i bought the grip with the same sort of handles this bar i got at a local used equipment company and i thought i would use it for chest supported rows at some point which i haven't started doing so it really just sits there and it doesn't even look that pretty um, usually the duffalo bar sits in the space right below it and i'll show you why in a second there's a little dinosaur collection, another gift from my daughter. Now, one of the things I wanna comment about this rack, I've got the Rogue gun racks with the plastic inserts to protect the bars. And if you look at where the bars are, they're up against the sheetrock in the corner and they're positioned in such a way that they come very close to the plates, but do not interfere with the plates. And they're, they're put in a position, they're, in, they're put there very specifically. So the gun racks were actually put at a height so that the squat bar lands in between these plates. Because if it was anywhere else, it wouldn't hit them. And then the duffalo bar goes up there because it's, it's the only place it can go. Because it's the same length as the squat bar. Um, and then all the short plate, the short barbells go where these fractional plates stick out further. Um, over here in this corner, I've got my chalk pole by PRX Performance. There's really nothing else that would fit in this corner. This is over the stones, underneath the barbell, up here in the corner. I use spider chalk, so if you're looking for chalk that really holds together, I like a block of chalk. I don't like chalk that kind of falls apart because then you can just pick it up and you can rub it on your hands and throw it back in the bowl, and it's not this powdery mess. Over here I have my heavy stones. These two stones were made as a different batch. I got them from the same guy in Santa Rosa, but they're smooth as can be. They're very, very slick. And so 
I don't use tacky in my garage because tacky is super messy, which makes these stones very difficult to get a hold of and lit, load. Um, I don't, don't do a lot of stone loading because it really bruises me up pretty bad. Anybody that's ever loaded stones will say, you know, you end up with a lot of bruises, but I enjoy it. I think it's a fun thing to do. Here I've got the new Obel adjustable dumbbells that go from five to 80 pounds and they're super fast to adjust. And I don't throw my weights around, so they're fine for me. And they don't take up very much space. So if you look here, I have this set up so that this pin will not hit them. I can stand here and get to them. I can reach over and change my weights if I want or add more weight. I can roll the stones out because there's floor space there. I can get to my barbells. I can get to my chalk, but there's not a ton of extra space. Everything in here is placed very specifically to maximize the floor space by using the wall as much as possible and by being very selective about my equipment. This, speaking of equipment, is the Texas Strength Systems lat pull down and low row machine in orange to match the rest of the equipment in the gym. I'm really happy with this piece of equipment. It is, in my opinion, it fits between the high-end lat pull-down and low row machines like Titan Fitness, no, like um, Rogue and Sornex and who else makes one? Um, oh, Elite FTS. But it is a little smaller than those, so it fits underneath the garage door. It's getting loud out there, so I'm gonna close the garage door. Um, I did recently order the belt squat attachment for this, so I'm gonna end up with a belt squat platform. And that's the one of the reasons why I got this was it was more than just a lap pull down and lower row machine. It also can be a belt squat. And I don't mind plate loaded, it's old school. You notice in here that everything is really old school. I mean, I've got a plate loaded leg extension and leg curl machine, but it's a high end plate uh, machine with belt, uh, sorry, band pegs. I've got basically just a rack against the wall with safety spotter arms rather than a big cage because I don't have the space for that. And I've got this plate loaded sort of old school cable machine that's lat pull down in low row. Um, and you know, I do really pretty old school training. I don't really need a lot more than this. Uh, let's get into the toolbox. So this toolbox here, um, I actually roll back and forth. It's got these weights on the corner because if I roll it to the left so that I get a different angle of the gym, this wheel here is not on the mat, but this one over here is. So I needed a way to keep all three, this wheel, that wheel, and the one in the back there on the ground while this one is off the ground. So I put those weights on the back corner to hold the corner down. This is where my phone sits to video my workouts so that I can upload them, send them to my coach, Coach Cameron. Shout out to Coach Cam. Um, some wrist wraps hand sanitizer, just random tools. Here's my extra rollers for when my rollers die. Some wipes and random tools, some straps, jump rope, and fasteners. Um, the bottom drawer is mostly hand saws and stuff. Um, so I think that's the whole garage gym. Thanks for coming and checking it out. Shout out to Ricky at Garage Gym Gains if he ends up reviewing this, I really appreciate it. Please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below and I will answer them. All right, take care. Thanks for hanging out with me for a full half an hour. You guys are totally obsessed with garage gyms, I can tell.